Okay, that starts now. This is a, this is a, a no, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just put it up. Yeah. This is like a, uh, this is a, a new series, and it's we're going to learn different sections of the Talmud uh, that are more associated with uh, with uh, moral ethics. Okay, so we're learning like the last last group of classes, uh, which we studied uh, last time, uh, which was a general introduction to Talmud. But this time we're going to learn selected pieces of the Talmud that sort of became. Uh, the foundational pieces for Jewish uh, ethical teachings. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Save your seat. Yeah, save your seat. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Take a seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, grab this over here. Yeah. There we have the copies here, and I'm going to put it on the. Uh, yeah, welcome, Brian. Hi. All right, bye. Today we're going to learn a, a piece of Talmud from Tractate Avodah Zarah, and uh, uh, Avodah Zarah is one of the one of the many tractates of the Talmud, which discusses mostly the laws about uh, idolatry. Avodah Zarah is idolatry, but uh, there's a very interesting piece on page 18 of Avodah Zarah that uh, gives us a deep insight into a very, very popular issue, and that is uh, euthanasia. Uh, euthanasia, as we know, is, is a concept of mercy killing and uh, assisted suicide, things like that. And I know maybe for some of you, that's a little bit of a sensitive <laughs> subject, etc. cetera. But um, it, it's an important one. And it's, it's good to see how Judaism goes with a, a very balanced approach. Uh, and the balance of the approach of Judaism is it's not something that just started today. It goes back thousands of years. And in the Talmud, you could see, you know, what the, 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 from the discussions of the rabbis in the Talmud, we see where we stand on, this, on the subject. So many of the subjects of the Talmud, they're in the stories of the Talmud, which are known as the Agada section of the Talmud, which it just seems like, it seems like a, a innocuous story, some kind of just a mysola. But if you look a little deeper, you see that it actually was that they were laying foundations for the future generations. And the code of Jewish law, which was written a thousand years after the Talmud was written, um, bases itself on one of the stories of the Talmud, and that becomes the foundational piece for the Jewish approach to euthanasia. Now, euthanasia, some people think it's, 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 it's something about the youth in Asia. It's not, it, it, or the youth in Africa, you know, <laughs> no, that's not euthanasia. It's spelled differently, right? It's a, youth. It's e e u t h, euthanasia, right? So, so uh, we have yeah, some. I once gave a class I remember years ago on euthanasia, and uh, you know, somebody asked me, well, you know, what what's what's you what do, what do you know about the euthanasia? <laughs> Anyhow. So let's give a look at the piece. Uh, you have a copy here. You can pull apart the Hebrew and the English. Those, we have the papers here in, in, the, in the shul. But uh, for those that are online, I'm going to share with you a, a, a screen. And then you'll be able to read it there. I, I forgot. Last time we, you, we sent out the... the, the oh, man, okay, okay. You know what? It's been a while ago. Next, next time, uh, in two weeks, when we resume this class, like I said next week, there is no class. But in two weeks, when we resume the class, I, I will, I will, uh, huh? No class next week because I'm, 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 I'm off in Israel. Oh, Joyce, oh, Joyce is here. We can start. We can start. Joyce, okay, okay. Uh, now we have, we have a minion. We're good. Okay. So let me, let me just see if I can share the screen. Uh, here we go. Here we go. There you go. Okay, here we see the English uh, part here. Can you see the, uh, let me know if you can see the, uh, uh, the. yeah, you can see it? Okay, I'm going to make it bigger for you momentarily. Okay, there we go. You see that? Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see. It's good. See. Okay. Our rabbis taught, uh, you see on the left column over here, uh, right over here, you see, I don't know if you can see my arrow here, right over here. Our rabbis taught. You can see, can you see my, my uh, arrow? Yeah, yeah. 
Our rabbis taught you. Yeah, okay, see that. When Rabbi Yosef Kisma was ill. So I'm going to look a little bit. We'll look first at the Hebrew because we want it to be a little bit. You learn a little bit how to learn. A, see a page of the Talmud. So we'll go down just a little bit. and Okay. So this we have over here is the, uh, is the uh, tractate here. Um, okay, now... <clears throat> Does anyone know where do you see where do you see can you see where you see the name of the tractate? Right on top of the page of the Hebrew page you see over there. What what tractate are we in again? Avod Zara. You see that Avod Zara on the top left hand over here, right on top here. And every page of the tractate you always in the, the Talmud you always can see the name of the tractate. You see it says Avoda Zara, right over here in the circle, right? Okay. Every, every track every tractate has has uh has uh many chapters which chapter is this anybody which chapter what's it called perek rishon you see that it says a perek rishon on top there yeah yeah chapter one and the name of the chapter is lefnei uh before their holidays that's the gentile holidays uh, there are certain laws regarding you know, like before what they things that the Gentiles did before the holidays. That's the name of the tractate. It's the name of the tractate. It's Lifnei Idehen. You see that right over there. That's the name. So on every page of the Talmud, you see again, remember, you see the name of the tractate. See, so what page, what page are we here on the Talmud? Which page you see the name, the number of the page? Always over here on the top. It shows you the number. What page is that? Page 18. It's Yudches. Yudches. Also in Hebrew, when we have Yudches, if you turns backwards what is it it's chai so it's page chai so it's a good page yeah. okay now we're gonna we look and when every page of the talmud the island in the middle is the island in the middle is is the what's the island in the, in the middle and eight the ches is eight so it's 18 so what what would you say over here where, where is the gemara the gemara is the the piece that's in the in the where where would the Gemara be found on this page? The, the Talmud piece is is the whole island in the middle of the page. You see, you see here is the this whole island. It, it gets it gets it starts narrow, gets a little wider, it gets wider on the bottom of the page. That's that's just a a uh, uh, has to do with the uh, there's no significance in that other than that's the way it worked out for the uh, for the uh, printer uh, for the typesetter. Yeah. And then we have on one side we have uh, we have what's known as over here on the right side you have Rashi, Rashi is a commentary, Rashi helps you through. And on the left side is Tosfot, is another commentary. They're, they're both like medieval commentaries on the uh, on the Talmud. Um, and then we have on the far left hand corner on the top, as we learned a little bit last time. This 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 is Ein Mishpat Neir Mitzvah. You see that on the top left hand corner. That is that that shows you footnotes where in the in the in the code of Jewish law can you find it. And on the right side you find other other footnotes for them. Anyways, let's let's go down a little bit here. Let's go down a bit and check. Uh, okay, now I'm going to make this a little bit larger for you guys to see it here. Um, I can't do it for you over there, but over here online. We could make it larger. So um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Now, so we're gonna look. Uh, you see, you see where you have the narrow lines, the narrowest lines, and then it widens a bit. Can you see that in, in the Gemara? The, the the lines in the middle narrow. So it's right over here, like three lines before it narrows. You'll see it says Rabbanan, Tanu Rabbanan. Tan, you see that? Three lines before it narrows. Joyce, can you see that? Okay, I, I, for the guys online, you can see where I'm pointing. Yeah. Tanu Rabbanan. The Rabbanan learned, the, the sages learned many times when it starts a, a section or a bright, uh, it says Tanu Rabbanan. The rabbis learned. This is what the, the story, the story that was told. To the rabbis. So this goes like this. Kishachola, Rabbi Yosef and Kisma. Kishachola, when he got sick. Chola, chola is like a ah, sick, right? So, so when, when Rabbi Yosef and Kisma, who was one of the great rabbis in his day, uh, this was in the times of the, uh, uh, the, the maybe, maybe the, uh, the uh, maybe it was already the second century. 
the second century uh, after the Common Era. Okay, uh, uh, AC, uh, AC, right? A, A, AD, 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 or or as we say, ACE sometimes after the Common Era. So in the second century, this is a Common Era. So there's a very famous rabbi. This was already after the temple was destroyed. Uh, we we know that that the uh, the Talmud uh, and the Mishnah flourished after the, the the second temple was destroyed. The Romans came in. They destroyed the second temple. And that was the time that Jewish scholarship really flourished very much against all odds, right? And uh, after the temple was destroyed, uh, they allowed still the Jews, Jews to stay. But then there was a, 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 a revolution of Bar Kokhba. Uh, the Jews tried to rebel against the Romans. And then things became really bad after that. And uh, they, 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 they put all kinds of decrees telling the Jews that they can't study Torah. Can't study Torah. They, they forbade the, the Jews to study Torah. So uh, there was a rabbi at the time. His name was Rabbi Yossi, or, or he says, Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma. And he was very, he was sick. He was sick. So when he was sick, Holoch Rabbi Chaninia ben Tradian Levakre. Chaninia ben Tradian, who was a, a famous rabbi in his, in his day, um, and he he went to visit Rabbi Yosef Kisma, who was his, his sick rabbi, was there was there, so he went to visit him. And uh, Rabbi Chanim and Tradian was was the, actually uh, I think later we see he was the father of of uh, father-in-law of Rabbi Meir. Uh, he was the father of Bruria. Remember, there's a very famous Jewish scholar. Her name was Bruria, and this was her father. Haninia, the son of Tradian, was her father. And he was also a great scholar. So he went to visit Rabbi Yaisi. And he walks into the room. Amalai. So this is this, this we see over here, a debate amongst the rabbis of how to deal with the, with the Romans at the time. What should we do? The Romans are saying that we can't study Torah. Right? And, and the Romans are in control. Uh, so should we, uh, should we put our life in danger to study Torah? As we know, the famous story with Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva was also a rabbi in that very same era. Right? And uh, he, was also, he was also admonished by, his, by many of, his, of, of the other rabbis that, you know, why do you, why do you put your life at risk to study Torah? Right? So Rabbi Akiva said, um, let, me, let me tell you a, a, a story. I'll tell you a story about a fox and a fish. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the fox was, was walking at the, 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 at the, at the river, by the riverside, right? And uh, he, he was hungry. So he told the fish, he said, fish, you know, over there, oh, it's very, very dangerous over there in the water. All the big fish are going to chop you up. He said, Come out over here on, 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 the, on the dry land and I'll take good care of you. You know, the fox wanted to eat. You know, he's the smartest of all the animals. So the fish said, I'm sorry, fox, I am not coming out. If, if I can't, if I'm not safe in my own habitat, how much more so if I go out of my habitat, um, I'm, I'm definitely at a, at a bigger risk. So Rabbi Kiva said, same thing as with Jews. He's saying to Jews, it's dangerous. Stop studying Torah. He says, but Jews stop studying Torah. It's like, it's like the fish going out of water. So if, if we're at danger, in danger, in, 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 our, in our own habitat, for sure we'll be in danger when we stop studying Torah, then we're out of our habitat. And so there, this was, but this was a debate that was going on at the time with many of the rabbis, whether it's worth to put our lives at, at risk to, to, to study Torah. Yeah, yeah, we know, I mean, we know, we know that, that, we know that, we know that it says that a Jew is only supposed to put their life at risk for three things. What are the three things that you're supposed to put your life at, at danger for? To kill someone else, you're right, you have to rather die than kill someone else. To bow down to an idol 
And the third thing is 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 uh, is to commit like uh, adultery or something like along those lines, a uh, sexual offense, one of the serious sexual offenses, right? So to commit that that crime, that's also the, the three, they're called the three cardinal sins. But studying Torah is not one of the things that you have to really give up your life for. But nonetheless, there were certain times in our history where it was considered the shasashmad. It was a time when, when, the, when, the, when the Gentiles were, were trying to, uh, uh, to force us into being something we didn't want to be. So then there were many that died even for smaller things. Right? They put their life in there because a time, a time of shmad when they're trying to, it's like, it's like a holocaust, an annihilation, an inquisition. Those, in those eras, the Jews were much more strict. They're even a smaller thing than the three cardinal sins, they also, but they also put the life in. So here we have a similar thing that Rabbi Akiva put his life at risk. And also this rabbi here, Hanina ben Tradian. Okay, so let's go back to the English just for a moment. Okay, we looked a little bit at the Hebrew. Now you guys are happy. You studied some Hebrew. Uh, Aramaic. Now we're going to go back to the English. Okay, you see where you started from? And we'll read it straight in English. Our rabbis taught. Can you see it there? Okay, let me show you again. Let's see it. Nice and clear. All right, you got it? Our rabbis taught. Here we go. You got it? See the spot? Our rabbis taught. When Rabbi Josie ben Kisma was ill, Rabbi Hanini ben Tradi went to visit him. He said to him, Yossi said to Hanina, Brother Hanina, my brother Hanina, knowest thou not that it is heaven that has ordained this? Don't you know that what's, what's happening now is ordained? The Roman nation to, has ordained this nation to reign, this Roman nation to reign. In other words, don't you see that the, the Romans have destroyed the temple and now they're, they're taking over Jerusalem by force. If, if, if they were able to do this, but it says, for though she laid waste his house, burnt his temple, slew his pious ones and caused his best ones to perish, still is she firmly established. In other words, they're terrible, they're terrible people, the Romans, but obviously, it's the hand of God now. Sit back, Hanina. There's nothing you could do about it. It's a gzeira. It's a decree from above. Hashem has made this happen. And there's nothing we can do about it. We can't change the, the, the facts on the ground. If, 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 if Hashem's temple was able to be destroyed, Hashem's house, and it wasn't stopped, and, and all the, the righteous people were slain, and et cetera, et cetera, accept it as a, as, as a decree. Don't put your life in, at risk. Don't put your life in danger. He said, this is, so this is what he's admonishing him. The old rabbi, Yossi, who's dying, who's on his deathbed, who's very sick, is telling Hanina, you see what's going on. Yet, I have heard about thee, that thou sittest and occupiest thyself with the Torah. I see, I hear that you, you sit and study Torah, thus publicly gather assemblies, you bring people together in public, and keepest a scroll of the law in thy bosom. Right? You walk around the streets with a Torah scroll, and you, you take all the people and the children all around, and you, you're, you're standing and studying, teaching Torah. Don't you know you're putting your life at risk? You shouldn't be doing this. That's basically what he's telling him, right? He replied, so what did, what, did the rabbi, what did the rabbi Hanina say? He says, heaven will show mercy. God will take care of me, right? right? Hashem, Hashem will help me. That's the Hebrew. From the heavens, heaven will take care of us, you know? They always say, you know, that uh, in God we trust, the rest pay cash, you know? <laughs> so. So, but, 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 but Rabbi Yossi said his, his approach was, uh, you know, why are you putting your life at risk? And Rukhanina said, Hashem will take care of me. He told, he told us to study Torah and he will take care of me. So he goes like this. I, he remonstrated, 
I am telling thee plain facts. And thou sayest, heaven shall show mercy. So Yaisi continues to argue with the Khanin. The Khanin says, Hashem will take care of me. So he says, I'm, I'm telling you what's going on. You, you don't see what's going on in the streets. And you're coming back with me with, with, uh, with heaven will show mercy. Right? I, he said, I'm telling you facts. And you're telling me something about heaven. Interesting, you know, some rabbi, some the practice, the practical rabbi, and you have the one that's that that has more. Uh... And then rabbis have to be careful what they say, okay? But they said he said it. He said it will surprise me if they do not burn both thee and the scroll of law with fire. Okay. You're gonna get not just you're gonna get killed, but you'll get. You'll be, I wouldn't be surprised if you get burnt with, with the Torah that, 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 that you're walking around on the streets with. Yeah. Is this a right or a wrong theory? He's not saying. This is just, this is just conversation. Yeah, yeah. Two different... By, by the, yeah, well, look, you know, it, 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 there actually were two schools of thought in this whole thing. Uh, and uh, like I said, there are certain things that everybody agrees to, but uh, you know, your person is not allowed to not allowed to uh, die. Uh, you have to keep your life. You have to be, you have to go nefesh, right? You have to keep yourself alive. However, there were times um, that, for instance, in the times of the Crusades, right? Times of the Crusade, the Crusades came into these, these cities. And um, they were going. They were killing all the Jews. They walked and came to the city. They kill all the Jews if they didn't accept the cross. It was like either you accept the cross, or, or, or we, or we kill you. And this was this was what was going on. By the, so the, there were many Jews at that time who committed suicide rather than them putting themselves. And there are many stories that they were surrounded in in, in a in, in a castle. Uh, there's a famous castle in 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 uh, in, in, in London, um, England, uh, where the Crusaders they surrounded one of the castles there. Um, it's a famous castle. Actually, she is the the Duchess of Fergie. She was the Duchess of York, York. So in York, yeah, in the city in the city of York, York is near London, somewhere, whatever. So in in York. They surrounded all the Jews in in the palace, the the the, the Crusaders, and they came there and they, they came into the into in, into the a few days later finally broke in, and the, the the Crusaders and they came in and all the Jews had committed suicide. Even the Masada the same story. is also a story. Now 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 the word the word the word different opinions on that. Masada also, you know, they they all committed suicide in Masada, but there were many of the rabbis that said. That it wasn't the right thing to do, because you know you should. Tr maybe the maybe the the Romans would have had mercy on them. Maybe not. You know, but but they what they were saying was rather than going through uh, uh, putting ourselves to to the anguish and to the to the uh, humiliation and humiliating the Jewish people, it's worth dying for that. So, like you see, there are some gray areas as to what is what is the is the right. There's no like right and wrong in certain certain circumstances. Here we see also, here we see the Rabbi Yossi. He says, don't put your life at risk to go around studying Torah in, in the streets. And uh, Hanina Ventradian, who was no uh, small guy, he said, no, you have to go and, 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 and teach Torah. And God will have mercy. Now let's, let's follow this story. This is a very interesting story that unfolds here. Huh? The father of the doctors have given their children time. Right. Rather, rather than rather than the satisfaction of the Nazis. Of the Nazis. Correct. In modern times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly the same thing. So it goes like this. Then it goes on, he says, um, so he says, I I'll be surprised, the rabbi says, if the Romans don't don't burn you with your with your Torah scroll. Rabbi said the other. So this is the rabbi said the other. So uh, he, but Rabbi Yossi is very sick. 
and he's and he, and he's he's dying right on his deathbed over there right so he asks Rabbi Chanina ben Tradian, he asks him how do I stand with regard to the world to come in other words you know me well he says to his guest right the rabbi that's 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 putting his life at risk he asks him because he's a great tzaddik he's still at the end of the day he's a great even though he disagrees with him there's a great righteous man he says how do I stand with the world to come it means what am I going what, what, how am I going to be when I get up there because he's dying right so he says so the rabbi answered Hanina says to Yaisi is there any particular act that thou has done he inquired which is a pretty interesting thing I mean this guy's a great rabbi that's dying over here. They ask him, is there anything you did? <laughs> this is a very interesting Gemara here. He says, is there any particular act that was done? Yeah, I, I've gone to shul for, for the last 80 years, and, and I, I, I kept every holiday, every festival, every Shabbos, every Yontav, every, you know, I, I kept all the 613 mitzvahs, but then he says, no, He's not asking that. He says, is there any particular act that was done? In other words, even if you do everything which you're supposed to, is no, is this something that stands out? Something that stands out in your life? He replied. And now he tells him a story. He says, I once mistook poor money for ordinary charity money. Okay. Purim is not Purim. Huh? Purim is not Purim. Uh, yeah, Purim money. Um, a second. I once mistook Purim money, ordinary charity money. Well, maybe you'll understand it better if you read the Hebrew. No, let's look at the bottom. Let's look at the bottom, the footnote. Let's see the footnote here. Um, number two. Is it number two? And he mixed up his money. The poorer money, right? And on Purim, you're supposed to give money to the poor, right? But it, it, it's 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 supposed to. Uh... So so what he did was he took. He was supposed to give money for the poor from Purim for Purim, and he took by mistake from other tzedakah money, and he gave it. Um, he gave, he gave, he used, he used that money. So to make up for it, he took from his own money and he, he gave an, another, another amount to make up for what he had, he had taken from the, so even though it was already tzedakah money from before, so it wasn't a terrible thing. He wasn't like he did a sin or something, right? But he made up for it and he, he gave from his own money back to the poor. He said, oh, if you're such a, if you're so careful with, with taking away money from the poor, right, that you, you, gave, you made sure to take extra money and give it to the poor. Well, then said he, would that thy portion were my portion and die my lot? He says, if that, if that, if that is, is Rabbi, if that is your, your portion, I want to be with you in the same place in heaven because you did such a good, good act. Okay, but now I want to get to the to the to the. So this, this is sort of a little bit of a side story. I'm not sure. Maybe it has some connection to what we're talking about. Maybe not. So here we go. It was said. Let's see, it was said. It was said that within but a few days, Rabbi Yosef and Kisma died. A few days later, the Rabbi Yosef he died, and all the great men of Rome went to his burial. And made great lamentations for him. They liked him because he was telling the Jews to keep quiet right? and not to study Torah. So by his by his funeral, the Roman dignitaries they came and they and they made lamentations for him. 
on their return, as they were coming back from Yossi's freedom funeral, it's interesting because they just, Yossi and Hanina just had the conversation, right, about, about the Romans, right? So Yossi dies and all the Romans go to him. And on the way back from Yossi's funeral, which they, which they lamented him, etc., they found that Abu Hanina ben Tradian sitting and occupying himself with the Torah. He was studying Torah on publicly gathering assemblies and keeping the Torah scroll in his bosom. The Romans saw him doing it. Straight away, they took hold of him and they wrapped him in the, in the scroll of the law. They did like the rabbi had forecasted. They grabbed him, they put him in, in, the, in, in the scroll of law. They placed bundles of branches around him and set them on fire. Nothing new for the for the for the goyim or whatever. Yeah, huh? This this scene is like an ongoing scene. He he, by the way, is one of the ten martyrs that we read on Yom Kippur. We read the ten martyr prayer. So he is Rav Chanin ben Tradian. He's one. He's one of them. This is this this is the this is the full story that they don't tell you on Yom Kippur. It's okay. They wrapped him in the Torah scroll. They placed bundles of branches around him and they set him afire. They then bought tufts of wool which they had soaked in water and they wanted him to suffer more. So they took these tufts of wool, wet tufts of wool and placed them over his heart so that he should not expire quickly. So he shouldn't die quickly. Okay, so they put him in, the, in publicly, they made a public burning of him and they made him, they made him, huh? Torture him to death and, and, and they didn't let him die quickly from the fire. They put water all around him so that he should, he should burn just a little bit longer. His daughter exclaimed, Father, that I should see you in this state. Like, uh, woe, unto, woe unto us. Daddy, what's happening? His daughter was standing there, obviously, near him and watching this whole thing happening. Yeah? He replied, If with I alone being burnt, it would have been a thing hard to bear. Okay, if I was burning alone, but now that I'm burning together with the scroll of law, I'm, I'm, I'm being burnt with Hashem, so to speak, right? He who will have regard for the plight of the Torah will also have regard for my plight. Because me and God, we're in on the same thing over here, right? Okay, this is a, a very famous piece of Gemara. Mm -hmm. His disciples called out, Rabbi, what seest thou? What do you see? I don't know how they had a conversation with him. While, while it was burned, like, what, what are you seeing? <laughs> he answered them, the parchment, parchments are being burnt, but the letters are soaring on high. So the parchments are burning. The parchments of the Torah, they're burning. It's a very deep concept. The, 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 the Torah is burning. Material is burning. But the letter, yeah. So, how would you understand this piece? What, 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 what do you think the rabbi is saying? Was saying over there? They can burn the physical, but the spiritual, right? The, 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 the Torah itself is not being burnt. Right. The, the physical Torah can be burnt. Yeah. But the but the spiritual Torah can't yeah. can't be burnt. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Like the soul uh -huh. of the Torah. Right. Right. Which is in it's the letters. Right. Right. It's. It's not. By, 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 the, by the way, by the way, by the way, yeah. By the way, do you know where those letters are? This from this Gemara? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You ever saw our machitza in the shul? Have you have you ever looked at the machitza in our shul? Yeah. Not on this side, on the other side, on the yeah. men's side. But you can see it right over there. You see it? You see it there? Yeah. Do you know where this, this comes from? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the flying letters of the Torah. That that the the uh the uh Torah is burnt. The rabbi and the Torah got burnt together, right? But the letters that he told his students that the letters of the Torah they're flying high. Oh, so, so that's that's where that's where this it's called Oisius Parchot. Okay. Uh, flying letters, flying letters. But I just, I just want to say something. I'll keep your thought, Joyce. Um, I, 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 we we said we said like this that the uh, that the, the physical Torah was destroyed, but the spirit of the Torah, the teachings, are never destroyed. And 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 what this means, what this is what he was telling his students, that maybe my body 
is 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 being destroyed over here. But my knowledge and my the teachings of Torah, which I have taught you, my students, that will never that will continue to burn in your heart, my students. The letters of the Torah, which I passed on to you, that nobody can destroy. And that you will teach to your children, and they will teach to their children. And so the the the, the, the physical Torah can be can be burnt, destroyed, can be, uh, you know, an anti-Semite can come into a shul and destroy a Torah. But the teachings of the Torah, the letters, that was, I thought it's like a powerful idea. You want to say something, Joyce? Yes. Say it loud because the people over here listening over here, you know, online. I, just thinking the Rabbi uh, Yossi um, yeah. said to him, don't sit around in the open and yeah. study. Right, right, right. You're going to endanger your life. But, so when they came and they were setting up to burn him, and he realized exactly what the rabbi had, had told him was coming was coming to fruition is he thinking, is he thinking this is much bigger than just me being destroyed yeah exactly that's a very good point that he's saying he's making his point because he disagreed with with his rabbi with yeah, the other rabbi that's what he I disagreed mean. with the point and what he meant to say is that that you know there are there are things that are worth dying for and there are things that 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 are, are greater than than the than the physical world, yeah. and and that those things those things continue on and on. So maybe me, Hanina Mentradian, my body is is going away, but Hanina Mentradian is continuing through his daughter Bruria and through his son of Rabbi Meir and through through all the other students that he was teaching all this time. They they continue. That's called Oisius Parches. But I want to get to my uh, my uh, euthanasia, my so let's let's go on a little further, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'll give you bigger over here, okay? For the for those that have problems with reading, you could should be able to read it now, okay? Um, the parchments are being burned, but the letters are sorting out. So now this is where where my euthanasia thing comes in. So the students are talking to their to their Rebbe, and the Rebbe is giving them deep ideas. He's telling them parchments are being burnt, letters are soaring. They tell them like this. They say, open up thy mouth. Open then thy mouth, said they. That's the students said to their Rebbe. So that the fire enter into thee. They say, open your mouth. So the, so the fumes or the fire will go into your mouth and, and you'll die faster. Right? You could, you could make you could finish the suffering a little faster. He replied, "Let him who gave me my soul take it away, but no one should injure oneself." He says, "I'm not going to do anything to die any faster." Interesting. Okay. Well, let's let's first finish this this whole piece. But that's that's step one over here. We see over here that you you can't really do anything. You're not allowed to do anything. To um, even though it seems like he's dying, maybe maybe it was let's say at the beginning of the fire, right? Maybe somebody will come, hop him, pull him out, and save his life. Maybe. So he says, "I don't want to do anything to hasten my death because there still is a chance. Maybe maybe I'll be saved. Maybe somebody will you know come come a savior will come." So this is this is the first thing we see over here. Um, you know, we do find with with uh, with a very famous king of in the house of David, King Cheskia. Um, he he was he was uh, he was dying, and he says he said at some point he said, "We have a tradition in the house of David. Even when the sword of death is on your neck, we don't give up asking Hashem for help." Till the last second, we never give up hope, even when the sword of uh, the uh, the sharp sword of death is on your neck. You still pray to God, and maybe you'll be saved. So over here also, he he said, "I'm not going to do anything to hasten my death." He says, "Let he who gave me the soul take it away, but no one should injure himself." 
Now let's continue a little bit. Now I don't know how much time is passing in between because this is like a sort of a, uh, this is a, a, a story. Right? There, there, there's no time frame of how many minutes, how many hours, whatever. The executioner then said to him, the executioner then said to him, you, you read ahead. Just give me a second of it. The executioner, the Roman executioner, said then said to him, Rabbi. And now we're going to see the other side of this euthanasia thing, Rabbi. If I raise the flame and take away the tufts of wool over thy heart, will thy cause me to enter in the life to come? It means if I take off the the uh, the, the the tufts of wool, I get a portion of will I get the portion of the world to come? And it would, yeah, like, yes, he replied. Then swear unto me, he urged. He swore unto him. I don't know how all of this is happening while he's burning, but yeah. okay. He swore unto him. He thereupon raised the flame and removed the tufts of wool from his heart, and his soul departed speedily. Like he helped himself. He hastened. Yes. He he no, right, right. Well, 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 okay. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. The executioner then jumped, threw himself into the fire, because he knows he has a portion of the world to come. The rabbi promised him. So he jumped in with the rabbi, and a voice came out from heaven. Rabbi Hanini Mantradin and the executioner had been assigned to the world to come. When Rebbe heard this, he wept and said, Rebbe was, was also a student of Hanini Mantradin, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi Huda the prince. Yeah? When he heard the story, he says, he said, he wept and said, one may acquire eternal life in a single hour, another after many years. Yeah. Right? Hanin Mantradin had to, his whole life had to work in it. The but the, ex <laughs> the executioner, he, he told the rabbi, I'll, I'll give you a little, a little bit less burning, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, okay, so let's, let's try to understand. Let's. I was just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Right, exactly. Get my fingers crossed. So let's try to understand this piece over here. Uh, you know, there's a, there's, it seems to be a bit of a contradiction. By the way, the Shulchan Aruch bases itself, the Code of Jewish Law bases itself on this Gemara and tells us some important uh, uh, teaching about euthanasia and about mercy killing and about when we're allowed to intervene when a person is dying. But I'll just tell you the more. Let's first try to understand this. What's the difference? between the first part, when the students say to the rabbi, open your mouth and die a little faster. Mm -hmm. What does the rabbi say? I want to hasten, I want to hasten let God take me away. And then, when, but then a minute later, or who knows, maybe an hour later, when the executioner turns to him and says, rabbi, if I raise the flame and take away thy tufts over thy heart, will, will you give me a place in the world to come? Right? And the rabbi says, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I will give you a place in the world to come. He says, promise me, you promise them. So it seems like that it is okay to hasten it. Right? Like somebody else is doing okay, it. Okay, okay. So, so maybe that's the doctor. Right, okay, so fine, fine. Taking away, taking away the will and tufts. Oh, so the question is, like, okay, so the will and tufts is an interesting thing. So you could say, so, so what's the difference between these two things? What is the difference between the first case of opening the mouth and allowing the fumes, the, the carbon monoxide to go into your mouth, right? Over there, you're doing, right, you, 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 it's like a suicide, a form of a suicide, right? Huh? What are you saying? I couldn't hear you, but Gary. When the executioner asked him, death is certain, it can't be saved. I can't hear you. When the executioner addresses him, yeah, death is certain; he can't be saved. There's no hope. Maybe. Right? You mean maybe maybe it might have been already a little bit later. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a possible that's one possibility. But the other the other possibility is the 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 woolen tufts. He's not he's not he's not really uh, um, hastening the death. He's just removing something that's in the way of the death. It's it's just it's just removing a, 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 a an external 
uh, 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 speed it, right. So in other words, you're, you're not speeding up the death itself. You're not doing an act unto yourself that, that that's make you this. that's making you die faster. But you you are moving something that's just in the way of the death. So you just you you didn't do a direct. It's an indirect act. It's an indirect act that 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 actually happens. Whereas in the in the first case, it's a direct act that Hanin <laughs> Batraji would do. Right? Putting, yeah, right. Put, he's putting his head in the fire a little deeper, right? Second case, it, the fire is, is is consuming him, and all he's doing is he's not he's not pushing the, himself close to the fire. Doing anything? Huh? He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything to himself. In right. the second case, right, right. But the question is, if he could he do it to himself? Could he pull off the tufts himself? Would that be would that be okay? I mean, that's a question. Is it only because it's somebody else and not himself? There's a lot, obviously a lot of things that are, are 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 over here at play, and it's something it's something like, huh? He was tied up, so he couldn't do it, right? The question is, would he be allowed to do it to himself? Right, 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 right. So, so in the code of Jewish law, um, in the code of Jewish law, it's, where it speaks about a person passing away, so it says a person is not allowed to do anything to hasten one's death. That's what it says in the code of Jewish law, that you're not allowed to, this is in the, this, the, the, the Ramah on the Shulchan Aruch says, however, the Ramah says, that if, let's say, this is a famous case, he says, the Ramah says, that if, let's say, there is a, a, an external thing going on there, let's say there is a wood chopper, in the olden days, what was stopping a person from dying? There was a wood chopper there that was making a lot of noise, right? And, and, and that's what's keeping the person alive because there's this ma ma major noise, this irritator. So, so the, the Shulchan Aruch says, can we, can we uh, uh, take away the, the wood chopper, right? And let the person die in peace kind of thing, right? Uh, it also says that if a person has, let's say, some kind of a, a medicine on the tongue, they used to have in the olden days, up some medicine that would keep the person from dying kind of thing. So can you remove that salt, the salt from off the tongue? So you're not doing something to hasten the death. <clears throat> you're just removing an external obstacle, an external obstacle that's that's holding back the person from dying. Okay. So the code, the code of Jewish law says yes, you're allowed to take away. So so in, in modern day uh, response, they turn to this actual to this piece of Shulchan Aruch, which 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 is which is tied in with this Gemara. And that became sort of the the uh, the uh, the basic sort of idea. I mean, how you apply it is, is is a little bit more complex. Like they say, the devil's in the details. But the 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 basic principle is in Judaism that active euthanasia is forbidden, and passive euthanasia might be okay. Act, active so euthanasia. Fine. Now, what is active euthanasia? What is passive euthanasia? That all the rabbis are arguing from today to tomorrow. But there is a concept from here that we see clearly. From the story with Rabbi Hanini and Tradian, that 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 they 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 establish over here, and, they, and the Gemara repeats it. And I, it seems like nobody disagreed with that. That that a, a direct act of of hastening death is forbidden, whereas an indirect thing is 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 is, is okay. So you can sign a DNR. Oh. so there are areas in halacha today where there is a consensus. Based on this Gemara, and there's other areas that that there is there's sort of gray area, but but what what would what I would say where is there a, sort of a consensus? A consensus would be, um, let's say where where, where like you say where, where somebody where someone is 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 riddled with cancer, nebuch. Uh, someone is is totally sick, and they're 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 in the throes of death. Like the like the case of of of, uh, of this case, the the throws of death, the throws of death from the from the let's say from the cancer already. They're riddled in cancer. The doctor says they have a day, two, three, and then and then in the middle of all of that, they catch a heart attack. And, and and the question is, can you sign under those circumstances a DNR, which means do not resuscitate? Do not resuscitate means to go ahead and do now heroics. To do, to do, to do something to try to bring the person back to life, kind of thing. 
So is it is it okay to say don't give it to me? Not not give it to me, right? So that, that many many hold that that's 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 okay. Or 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 where a person is mamish and terrible terrible inexpressible pain, and then they want to give you some more cancer treatment, another treatment, another treatment. Sometimes it might be okay to say I ref I refuse to take to take one. So there is a concept of passive. But 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 there is a everyone knows the famous thing that's brought in halacha that that whether you can uh, you know to put to put a person on a machine uh, um, uh, you 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 uh, that's a choice but once the person is on a machine to pull the plug that's doing an act an active act the no no the thing that is keeping him alive. <laughs> Right. He says, "I'll take it away." Okay, but but it's 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 not what was keeping him alive. It was it was prolonging just it was it was just pro, it was just prolo prolonging the suffering, prolonging the suffering, prolonging the suffering. The 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 not the the the, the, the plugs or whatever that that's prolonging life, not prolonging suffering. You understand? Over here, he's just taking away the thing that's that's in the way that that's 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 that's, that's making just making you suffer more. It's between the person and and the and the and the fire, right? And basically, you took away the wall between the the, the fire, so that the fire does whatever it's doing. The fire is what's what's killing the person. You're just taking away something in between. Whereas, whereas when when you when you uh, when you pull the plug, usually what happens is it, it's almost immediate. Maybe if uh, half an hour now, we know what's going to happen immediately as a result. So it, it's it's. I'm not, I'm not saying that that it's 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 a simple situation. Every case has to be judged in its own merits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we shouldn't have to go through this. Many, every, but everybody goes through this question. And at the time, you know, you look, you, you talk to the rabbis, you talk to the doctors, and you try to figure it out. But I'm just telling you that from here, we see sort of sort of a a a a, um, a framework, a framework of 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 forbidding active the active euthanasia. Of opening your mouth to take the fumes and taking your life, dying a little faster as a result of that, as opposed to taking away the the tufts of the heart. Now, but there have been papers where they kept people for years and years and years in a coma. And vegetables. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Arik Sharon was was a well, eight years. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, yeah. look, I, I. I you know, these are these are the things I'll I'll try to find out when I get up in heaven, but you know so, sometimes people people don't know. You know we don't have the we don't we even though it might be the the smart thing to do, but not always is it the right thing to do to pull a plug or whatever, right? The kind of things. So. Mm -hmm. so one one needs one needs to judge judge them. Now, you know there is there is a, a concept here. There's two things. One is. Uh, one is the issue of murder, which that that's where the executioner would fall in, and then there's the issue of taking your own life. Uh, you know, in Judaism, we know we know obviously that as Jews, we're not allowed to take our own own life, and uh, it's 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 definitely uh, something that is forbidden. How do we know it's forbidden? Because we know we know because in the case of of, of a of a suicide. Um, the person that does commits the suicide is is the is the one that's he's the he, he's both the victim and 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 the murderer wrapped in one, right? So that's a, it's a very complicated thing, you know. Years years ago, they used to say that uh, that someone that commits suicide they don't they wouldn't bury it in 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 the in the study, right? Right. But today, today, right? Today we're very very uh, much more lenient in these things because we know. In the only case where a person would not be, you know, buried in a Jewish cemetery would be if if it was done out of a sound mind. And most cases, as we all know, uh, is is not of sound mind. And and uh, and even if they if they were of sound that mind, the the Chassam Saif and others write that probably while they were doing it, they regretted it. They probably were in a situation at some point. Where they suddenly realize what they're doing, and it would, but it was already too late. They were already in a, in a, in a circumstance where they, where they, where they couldn't stop the mechanism of the suicide in place. So today we do generally bury a, a, a suicide, but but we have 
people that, that committed a suicide for the cause, like like almost this rabbi over here in the story, you know, he knew what was coming. Right. So so sometimes sometimes you're 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 putting yourself in, in, in death's in death's way, which is which is almost also a form of, of, of suicide, because you know you know what's coming. You know what's coming. So but you know you find uh, there was a famous story in the, in, in the in the Torah, King Saul. King Saul was being captured by the enemies, and the enemies were about to get him. And he told his his young young helper, put the sword in the ground, and he went over and and, and he fell onto the sword. Uh, I, I thought for, the prophet uh, Nathan killed him because he didn't uh, no. obey God's. Uh, he brought. Some no, 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 that was Agag he killed over there. He killed the king of Amalek. Oh. And maybe you misread the story. <laughs> it's at the end of the story it says he killed he, he he chopped off the head of the of the of the uh of the uh of the king of, of Amalek. But the Saul later was 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 killed by an act of suicide. So because he, to... but over there we have to understand that over there the, the, the commentaries argue. That it wasn't a suicide; it was it was for the glory of Israel. He was the king, and if it would be taken to the enemy, it would be a case of 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 of, of Hashem. Hashem and all that. So some sometimes that's okay, and that's why I said like the, by the by the Crusades, many Jews took their life in order not to uh, not to make an, an embarrassment for the Jewish people. Uh, so instead of that, they, they they preempted with a suicide. So so we do find uh, certain cases. Where the suicide is is permitted. So, getting back to this executioner, yeah, who ended up with a portion of the world to come, mm. for so to speak, um, helping the rabbi. Yes, right. or or pulling out the ventilator or whatever he would have otherwise done, even though he was obviously chosen all for profession. Right. Um, but he was doing terrible things before that, and right. Right. yet the act of hastening that death. Yeah. Uh, gave him a portion in the world to come. Would that not be interpreted by doctors today as eligible for a portion? Right. I mean, that, 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 that Dr. Dr. Kevorkian. Dr. Kevorkian. Or, or, or we could, well, not even Kevorkian, but pulling out the flag. Or, yeah. But, he, but over here, the, the, the thing that he did was he removed the tufts of wool. The question is the, what, what are we talking about raising the flame? Raising the flame is that yeah, the raising the flame is, is not fire. yes feeding the fire. So, but it, it's also once more removed than let's say opening your mouth and putting the fire into yourself. No, I'm not worried about him committing suicide. Right. I'm talking about this subject of an executioner who suddenly ends up with a portion of the world right, to come, right, right. even though he was so oh. in his life with a simple act of hastening this guy. Death gave him all the same level as this rabbi. Well, who never must say Only heaven, only heaven can determine that answer. <laughs> yeah, well, heaven, heaven, but heaven said he, 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 he deserved, he deserved, he deserved the portion of the world to come. So, so he look, come he, again. he, uh, you know, and he committed what, suicide. What, he what, what, into the fire. Right. Uh, no, but nobody was worried about his suicide. <laughs> He's like, yeah. yeah, he committed suicide. Well, he he just wanted to get to the world to come faster. He was yeah. he <laughs> was a little he's professional. <laughs> he was, Rabbi Plotkin, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Darlene, go ahead. You said earlier, does this apply today? That if somebody of sound mind, a Jewish person, takes their own life, they would not be buried in a Jewish cemetery? Is this today? Are you talking? I told, I told, told you, in most cases, we're, we're lenient, as you know. Uh, in most cases, we know that, the, that usually it's involved mental illness. And it's yeah. usually all we, we say. But there aren't. There's nobody really that 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 uh, usually people that, that commit suicide, uh, they're having uh, financial problems, they're having all kinds of things. I mean, it, it, it's hard hard to find a person that will commit suicide because uh, they don't believe in God, kind of they, to show that they, they they have no faith in life. Uh, they don't believe life is worth living. You know, you know that. Yeah, because there are people who are suffer with chronic illness, terrible pain, and they choose 
to die because they just can't live like that, but they're of sound mind. Absolutely sound. Oh, okay, okay. Sound, sound, yeah, sound mind is is is, is when you when you're in, when you're such an ex excruciating pain, right? You're not of sound mind. Even even though you make a lot of sense, but you you're you're overwhelmed by a by a greater force. So I, I think that uh, you know that uh, the people that uh, you know look today we bury everybody. That's just the bottom yeah, line. Exactly. <laughs> that's the that's the bottom line. Uh, like I said, the the Chassam Seifer says also that people when they uh, when the moment that they're that they're that they're passing away they have regrets. And at, at that moment, and that's why one of the reasons why they, they, they lose a portion of the world to come when they're committing suicide uh, would be because, generally speaking, we say that every person needs an atonement. We all do sins. And one of the greatest atonements that any human being could possibly have is death itself. Death is one of the greatest atonements that we have. When we die, that moment of death, if it's done properly with the Shema, and then you're dying, that the, 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 the death is the atonement, the ultimate atonement for the person. Now, if you, if you die through suicide, so the death can't be an atonement then, because it's an act of sin. So, so, so therefore, the, the, there's no atonement that takes place at the, at the passing. And therefore, you don't merit the portion of the world to come, because you lose out on that moment of death. That's one of the explanations that is, that is given. <laughs> well, there are, you know, there are all kinds of people in this world. And uh, that's a story. But I, I'm just, I just want to give, show you, I'm just trying, what I'm trying to do in this class is to show you how a piece of Gemara that was written 2,000 years ago has become the basis of all of halacha today <laughs> of, of trying to figure out uh, what is uh, legitimate and what is not legitimate. Uh, there's a, another question that's asked. If someone is dying and they're in excruciating pain, are you allowed to pray that they should die? Uh, they should be out of their pain. We know a lot of people make that prayer. You know, they, they, if you see a loved one, let's say, that's suffering, so a lot of people will say, oh, oh, God, oh God, please just, just, just take them away already and, and, don't, and don't let them suffer so much. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, we I mean, everyone knows a prayer generally is, is a prayer that a person should live. That's generally what a prayer is, right? But is it is it okay to pray that someone should uh, should pass away? Now, but look, if you believe that prayer can actually cause something to happen, then then you shouldn't be allowed to do that prayer because that's like that's like hastening their death. If you believe that prayer is effective, then if a lot of people will pray this, then it'll cause the person to die faster. So if the prayer is effective, so then the prayer is causing the person to die, so you shouldn't be allowed to do that. But then again, at the end of the day, even when I pray, I know God is ultimately the one who decides. So I'm just asking of God, but I'm not the one who pulls the plug. God is the one who pulls the plug, right? So if I'm praying a loved one should die, at the end of the day, it's Hashem that, that makes the decision. But the, but the question is, am, am, I, am I not the partner in it? Even, so even, though, even, though, even though I'm praying with oh God. So Yan yeah. you're advocating that she was judged that, that he should make this person die. If you're praying for the, the oh, Diana met Diana met is after that person. Right? Yes, so you say he was the true judge, but if she's praying ahead of the death, yeah, you know, take them already. Right, right. The question, the question is, is is that permitted or not? Now, I, I can't see that it's it it's it's worse than the executioner, because uh, you know they're saying the executioner was okay. He removed he removed some of the some of the tufts from the heart. So all you're saying to God is. Take away the suffering. Now, we're not saying, of course we're saying to God that if God wants to make a miracle and let the person live. Well, of course we want the person. We don't want the person to die. We just want to take away the, take away, take away the suffering part. Take away the tufts. That's what we're asking for. So that's basically what the prayer is. 
So there are many, many rabbis that say that it actually is okay to pray something like that when a person is already in the throes of death. The Rabbi Nisim Grandi, who from, from Grona, Girona, uh, he was a very famous uh, commentary on the Talmud, lived in like the 14th century. And he writes that in Masech Nadarim that, it, that it's actually an okay thing to do. So, uh, so we see that, that not only uh, can you take away the tufts, but you also can even pray sometimes that a person shouldn't, shouldn't be in a state of suffering, pain of agony. I think yeah. we should put up, they shouldn't allow that. I think they should put a fence around that and- Which one? Around your, that you're not allowed to pray that the person should die. You pray, please Hashem, let this person not suffer anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because but it, it's a fine line, and you could say, "Well, basically, I will still." You're not saying those horrible words. Right, exactly. That is, it, it's just not there, is, there is there is there is a gemara somewhere that that uh, that, that the uh, maid servant of Rabbi Huda Nasi, when he was very sick, she she the rabbis were, were in the house, and all the rabbis were gathering around his bedside, and they were praying that he should live. So it says that she took hot water and she threw it from the from the from the from the top from the porch to to scare the rabbis off that they should all leave and stop praying for the rabbi because he's suffering so much. So she I wanted. To, she, for yeah, she believed that, that that they were they were holding him back from dying, and she saw her her boss was suffering so much. So and the Gemara brings the story. The Gemara thought that was like it was like a cool thing okay, that so she 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 saw she saw that so she stopped. She she stopped prayer. Doesn't say that they, that she prayed that he should die, but yeah. she 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 didn't want so much prayer going on because she felt that that was the prayers was what was holding him back, keeping him in suffering state. Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting things in the Gemara and and, and, and in the Shulchan Aruch and the Code of Jewish Law. But this is one one case. Uh, we have we have another uh, this this class of six weeks. How they brought in that the executioner went to heaven. Mm. Um, that is really yeah, uh, it's, it's like, why would they bring that in? They yeah, in, not, not, in other words, can a Nazi yeah. that does a little bit of a good a good thing? Right, 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 right. But 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 it, 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 it but it could be that he 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 jumped in because he he felt that he was so wrong. Some people don't like to talk very much. Either. I mean, yeah, no, no, no but, 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 but it, could, it could be that he had remorse and he had regrets of what he was tshuva. doing. And he felt that the only thing he could do for Chuva is, is just to, to jump into the fire. Stop himself killing other people yeah. by dying. Right, right. It's like a proactive way of, way of it. Anyway. So maybe I'm just saying that, that and what he did for the rabbi is a, fa is a, is a favor. So look, that, it's a good question. In other words, uh, can a Nazi do Chuva? This is this could sort of be a Gemara yeah, that you that you could work. Yeah, but that's what he said. He was following the order of the run. He was just the ex. He said. He said. Yeah, he says I am. I am just the executioner. You know, I'm not. It's not a messenger, right? Anyways, we're gonna finish. We're gonna stop over here. We're gonna finish up this piece over here. There's, there's a lot more to do, but I have I have another five of these uh, concepts, which which are brought. Huh? Yeah, next week. So next week there's no class, okay. but the week okay. after, I have my ne my nephew's bar mitzvah, Mitzvah Hashem, uh, Raskin. In Israel. In Israel, they're doing it. They're, they're doing it. Yeah, they're doing it. There. So the whole family is going there to Israel. Yeah. So I'm not going to be here next week, guys. Okay. Uh, Gary. Time in Israel, Michael. Enjoy. Sorry for this morbid picture. piece over here, but I thought it's a good, uh, in very interesting piece to to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can never be with the whole night. Yeah, because you can talk about. Yeah, but uh, like I say, this the, 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 it is not there's, there's no right or wrong, but there's parameters here within it, so that it creates. We ride on the of this famous rabbi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Next time when you read about him on on Yom Kippur, you'll you'll yeah. understand. I mean, usually it's at the part of the davening where everybody's running out, anyways. That's but, <laughs> <laughs> at the end of Musaf, they have his yeah, early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, boy, they talk about the 10 martyrs. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I
They, they talk about okay. the 10 martyrs. There we go. So, so, any, anyone else have any questions before we go? It was very nice interesting. You. Thank you. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's a shame in two weeks' time. Enjoy your trip to Israel. Enjoy. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.